So today we're looking at James chapter 5, verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Then he must pray. Is anyone cheerful? He is to sing praises. As we saw, right? As we continue and finish the book of James. If you remember, James chapter 1 starts with what? Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter virus trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces endurance. And in between that, we see what happens with uh, people during that time. They were fighting. They were talking against one another. They were showing favoritism towards the rich. They were f murdering one another. <clears throat> and here in chapter 5, we, we see the condition that they're also experiencing that them, the Christians, were probably poor and were suffering indeed. Why? Because they were dying, some of them were. Because they were that poor. The rich people were withholding their salaries. The rich people whom if they invited to church would go to church <clears throat> and they would give the best chair. And Jesus saying, why do you give it to them? At the expense of the poor. Don't you remember? This, this rich one were the ones giving you a hard time. And God says, you know what? Be patient. Normally when people have problems, they go to different doctors, they go to different uh, books on how to resolve that problem. Think positive, do this, do that. You know, and, and they would say, God would promise you this and that, so don't worry. But here, what do we see? God is telling you. He's not telling, the, he's not telling us that he'll take us out of the problem. He's telling us, be patient. Why? Because I am coming soon. That's not common nowadays to hear that. When you have problems, we find solutions. We are not told to endure. And it says here, be patient, don't complain, but endure like Job. Wow. What, what if you get that advice? Let's say, Forget it. I'll go to another guy who'll give me a better advice, who'll give me comfort, who'll say encouraging words to me. Totally different. And here in our passage today, God is saying, endure. Second, have integrity. Verbal integrity in our case. Let your yes be yes, let your no be no. He wants us to be known for that. That our Father is a God of truth. Our Father is not the devil. And one more, he says. If any one of you are suffering, then he must pray. The thing with suffering is no one is exempted from suffering. Do you suffer? Yes. Some people think that Christians are ex exempted from suffering. In fact, that's what they peddle. Become a Christian and your life would be good. Become a Christian, your marriage will be better. As if you're exempted. No, you're not. In fact, the Bible says, expect it, especially if you're a believer, especially if you're a follower of Christ. Expect the suffering, right, Santino? 
Because if you want to be a follower of Christ and you want to walk his path and follow his step, where did Christ, where did the life of Christ le led to? The cross. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, for sure they will persecute you. Expect it as a believer, right? What are we to do when we suffer? What are, what are we to do when we are experiencing difficulties? It could be financial difficulties. It could be relational difficulties. It could be health. What could be the difficulties, Bambino? What's an example? If you have like... A cancer. Cancer. Yes, a cancer. But you know what? The primary word is here in suffering is suffering in the gospel. The primary usage of the word suffering in the New Testament is for that day. Then the sad part is that, you know what? We're not even suffering for the gospel. We're not even suffering for being obedient Christians. We're suffering because of our mistakes. Because of our follies. If I get a heart problem, it's because of my fault. I eat too much and I have no discipline in exercising. And now I'm experiencing all kinds of trouble, suffering. But this passage also deals with that. It has a broad use, not only for those who are primarily called to suffer, but for anyone who's suffering. What does God say? In the verse? No, in verse 13. Pray. He is, he then he must what? Pray. Pray. Then he must run to God. That's the idea. We are to run to God. Not run to man. Not run to your best friend. Not run to... A psychiatrist, not run to your pastor. You are to run to God. Right? We are to pray. To come to Him. Prayer shows our dependency on God. Are you dependent on God? How's your prayer life? A lot of us, we live in a life of presumption. We presume everything. Right? Now some people, the, the sad part is some people, they say, they only pray when hard times come. I'm having a hard time. Pray, pray, pray. When good, come, when good times happens, guess what? What do they do? They forget God. That's why God says in the second part, is anyone cheerful? What is he to do, Bambino? Sing songs. Sings? Sing songs. Yeah. Meaning what? Run to God again. Right? What are the possible reasons for being, what's your word? Cheerful? Happy? What's your word? Cheerful. Cheerful, cheerful, Bettina. Verse 13. Yes, cheerful. Cheerful. What, happy also? What do you mean by that? What makes you cheerful, Bettina? Good grades. Good grades, be cheerful, yeah? Things are going well. Things are going well, huh? Yes, Satina? Yeah? Good business, Medina, for you? Protection. Protection for the family? Yes. If the family is protected. So, a lot of people ask different reasons for being cheerful. You won the lottery. You get the promotion. But the word cheerful here means what? Peace of mind. Now, 
I was shocked when I when I checked that word. Peace of mind. The mere fact that you have peace of mind, you are to be cheerful. The mere fact that if you don't have any problems, you are to be cheerful. And the Bible tells us that we are to. He is to sing praises. That is present tense. Eh? You are to continually praise Him. In all things, give thanks. So there's no excuse not to connect to God. Think of it. There is no excuse not to connect to God. If you're feeling down a lot of problems, guess what? Run to God. If you're feeling way up there, cheerful and happy, run to God. If you're feeling just right and you just have the peace of mind, if everything is coasting along well, run to God. Right? So there is no excuse for you not to run to God. In fact, the way I saw it, Kanina, is there's every excuse to run to Him. I remember before when I was courting your mom, I was looking for excuses just to talk to her, just to be with her. But Bina, if your crush likes this certain singer on TV and that, that singer is singing and you know her text number, you would probably text her, hey, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? You find excuses just to talk to her, just to see her. Right? Here, the Bible is showing us that what? We have all the excuse to come to Him. Are we? drawing to God. He's giving us, He's showing us that every opportunity is an opportunity to run to Him. And He finds pleasure when you find pleasure and dependence on Him. And it pains Him when the children of God, His, me and you, choose not to connect with God. Try to imagine if one day I realize that you guys don't, and you're on your own already. You're living with your own family and you don't even visit us. You don't, you don't even call us. You don't even drop by. You only drop by when? When it's my birthday, when it's mom's birthday. It pains. It will hurt us. But it's okay. Don't worry, guys. Same with God. He wants us to connect with Him in all circumstances through prayer and praise. Thus says the Lord. Amen.